Don't drop your feather. I appreciate what you did here with the set, making it very spiritual, bro, but I feel like the feathers are a bridge too far. Yeah, is, well, that's just your perspective. Is this, is this, this is my feather friends that help my studio. <laughs> uh, you don't tape juju. You don't They're tape magical. Them. Do you tape them to the microphone before you record? Sometimes I do. Sometimes I tape them to my head. I'm so afraid that people are going to take the set seriously that I feel like I need to point it out, but then I, I have a policy against explaining a joke. I want to say it different. Hey, hi. I already say it like that. Welcome to Spiritual Bro Book Club. This is episode one. I have no idea what I'm doing. I am on day 14, 12 of the flu, but the show must go on because I want to slide this in on 11 11 because I am a parody of myself. You all right? Yeah, just getting comfy. Just getting comfy. Uh, this is Mark Pontius. He's going to be on this show sometimes. This is going to be me and bros. We're just broing down, talking about spirituality, talking about uh, whatever the fuck reality is becoming. So just for clarity, is a spiritual bro, I feel like you're kind of making fun of me. I, uh, here's. You're mocking me. I'm not you. Okay, not just you. <laughs> knew it uh, trapped me on this fucking <laughs> podcast to make fun of me <laughs> that's what i should have done is recorded a whole season and yeah um a little bit i'm making fun of all of us i'm making fun of what what are we doing what does this become what spiritual bro book club is what it was a segment i wanted to do on patreon at one point um, I just want to have like bros on and you know, bros can be ladies, but bros just people super in the mental space. And because I, I feel like that's not, that's not my strong suit. The mind is not my strong suit. My mind is, is just like, like jello and like, uh, incomplete lyrics of songs and, and weird memories of, of Christian rap groups. I just, it's not... I don't have the thing that you guys have. You guys have like a hard drive where you can read all these books and then you can store all of that information and you can just vomit it. I think I'm like channeling nonsense and you're just vo vomiting facts. And uh, yeah, so I wanted to do a, a segment on the Patreon where I just have bros come explain consciousness to me from you know, the encyclopedia of everything that Terrence McKenna has ever said. <laughs> and I never did the segment, 
but I love the name. And I love to name a podcast something that has nothing to do with what it is. So that might be what this is. I have no idea. I have a vague idea of what I want this to be. But very often, if I have too too solid of an idea, I won't follow through with it. So I'm trying to stay very kind of open and just allow this to be whatever it's going to be. Uh, you know, Soberish was an accident. Soberish was a recovery podcast because I was trying to sell ad space. And then the person who was going to buy the ad space stopped answering my calls. And I was in my own personal evolution going through a phase where I felt like it was time for me to be honest about the fact that I've been into this shit for decades and was kind of hiding it because I didn't want people to think I was nuts. Now I'm fully comfortable with people thinking I'm nuts. But so Soberish was just kind of a just kind of my own journey of kind of coming out of that closet. And then 2020 hit and I just got too serious. I was, I got pummeled personally. I got Lyme disease. I had a brain parasite. I could barely focus. And I got really, I wasn't expecting a bunch of people to listen to that podcast. And then I felt like people were looking to me to be their authority, which may or not, may or may not have been true. Hard to say with a brain parasite, what's real and what's projection. And, but then I, I felt pressure to know. I felt pressure to, to be serious. And I became very serious. 2020 was so heavy for me. And I'm very grateful for everything I learned in that time. But Soberish got too serious and I felt trapped by it. I don't want to, I, I want to express not seriousness. I don't think I'm meant to be serious. I, that's not how I deal with anything. I'm cracking jokes. You know, you've seen me go through personal tragedies. I don't, I do not do that through seriousness. I like to get serious and vulnerable and I want this to be serious and vulnerable, but Soberish was too heavy. So I ditched it and created Awakening OD or AOD. And that was fun and funny and really hard to do because I was barely able to complete sentences like that was so hard like I would have to write down everything I was going to say and it would take me forever just to get a half an hour episode done and AOD was really like a six month process or project it started in December and, and it, it was more like a bit right it was a and it was a bit yeah and it's it was really fun but I feel like I said everything I had to say from that perspective in 12 episodes from December to June, and it really should have been done after Hot Alien Summer, but people like it. And here's the thing about me. I don't know what I'm motivated by. I can't figure it out, but something I'm definitely not motivated by is what other people want me to do. Because if, if I was, I would stick to things that people like, and I don't. I can't make my... I have to be inspired by the thing that I'm doing, and... I just felt like I said it all in AOD and then I've squeezed a few out in the last year, but I don't, I don't like it anymore for a million reasons. Number one, it's a bit, it's a podcast by myself. You can only do that bit for so long and I'm, I'm telling people what to do and I've my personal transformation in the last like 18 months I've become so, ugh, I don't know, so grossed out by speaking with authority, like speaking with authority, evangelizing. You know, I hadn't liked that in a long time, but it's still a big part of who I am. But I, I've reached the point that I've always heard about where they say you realize you don't know anything. And that's truly where I am. I'm like, I am a, a ball of awareness of this present moment and I will change my mind. And I don't want to, I don't want to tell people what to do yet. I want to do that. Like for some reason, I, I still have the desire to have these conversations, but I, I can't, I can't do that bit anymore. I'm going to, I think, do one more just to let people know that there's a new podcast. But I have to get, that feels too serious to me. 
it feels I was loading them up on on YouTube finally and the contrast between pre hot alien summer and the last few where I'm just yelling like a like a nightmare uh, warden at the end because that's like what it feels like to me I'm like squeezing that bit out so I can't plus I can't just <sighs> I'm we're both kind of like this i once i've done something it's like ugh, you know it's like i already did it i don't want to do it i can't stick to things for very long because it feels like when you're um you know like when you're what well you don't uh everyone else you know how when you've like already come but the porn is still on <laughs> everyone but you um have that, I that mean... <laughs> I'm trying to think of what an allegory for this would be with you, but I can't. For the rest of the world, yeah, where you're just like you're jerking off to something and then it's you're done and then you want to be done with the thing that you were. It's gross. Like, that's how I feel about podcasts. I've already come. We'll just take that part out. It's fine. <laughs> um, there's sometimes I get addicted to a metaphor and I'm just like, no, this is the metaphor for this energy and I'm going to make it work. And it just doesn't. <sighs> anyway, so this is, I, I think what this is going to be is if so what I want is if soberish and and AOD had a baby. And but this new this version of me and it's also like i'm making a video podcast on youtube here's the other thing is when things are popular i don't ever want to do them you're a hipster like you want to do things before everyone else is into them and i'm some sort of other hipster where i'm like once everyone's done with it i'm like okay now i'll go do it now i didn't like the pressure i didn't like the energy of the last couple of years i didn't like the way people were acting i didn't want to have anything to do with it i was hiding there was so much pressure to be good and I don't, I don't know myself to be good. I know myself to be doing the best I can with what I've got, but what I've got is often trash. <laughs> it's often not great. And then there was a, a, an, a lot of pressure to be right. And I don't, I don't think I want to be right. I, my ego wants to be right. Sometimes my insecurity wants to be right. And we talked about this a little bit in the first take of this episode, but I I don't talk into microphones to be or I don't want to talk into my ego does sometimes but I I don't want to talk into microphones to change people's minds that's something that freaks me out about this is like when I hear people trying to force what I what I said to make like to apply it to their lives when it clearly doesn't but I don't want to be right and I I felt like that's what was demanded in the last couple of years was to get everything right and I was like well I'm not up to that for sure especially with a brain parasite so I feel like we're entering into a new era I hope that we're entering into a new era I'm entering into a new era where I I want to learn how to be curious and open I'm definitely already open I feel like I'm a pretty open-minded person to my own detriment sometimes but I don't feel like I'm wildly curious in conversations, especially about consciousness. I feel like I can be a little bit dominant and I want to soften in that area of my life. And I want to move into a, a new era in which we explore perspectives in a curious way. And I've already recorded a few episodes of this podcast. I went to LA and recorded a few of them. And I can say after listening to them, like, this will be a process. <laughs> I'm definitely not. I'm like, I want this to be vulnerable and curious. And then I'm immediately in like a debate. But this is what I feel like we've done is we break out of the matrix, whatever you want to call this awakening. And, and I want to explore this idea on the podcast of like, what the fuck even is awakening at this point. But there has been a breakaway from, from the collect, from the matrix, whatever the fuck you want to call that, like the, the dream, the illusion. And we are now floating out in a reality where everything is possible 
And what we have done with that is get together on podcasts and debate each other, you know, whether or not the earth is flat, uh, what Tesla really meant with the 369, you know, whether or not the Anunnaki were vegan, you know, and it's like with all of the vitriol, not vitriol, but like certainty of you know, that people bring to things like religion and politics. And it's like, is this what we're going to do with infinite knowing, unknowing, you know? And I get part of it because we, t I'm going to, do you want to talk at some point? <laughs> well, I'm just here to tell you that I do in fact know everything and I'm always right because I'm the spiritual bro. So I'm just going to let you keep talking nonsense like because you don't know anything. So. <laughs> I feel like I've been ranting for 15 minutes while you process, like, is this entire podcast to make fun of me? Is this what? No, I Did do I love build it. the set for a podcast to make fun of me? No, when you first came up with this idea, I thought, I was like, oh, shit, this is like totally what I find myself doing a lot of the times. Though I don't have a podcast, so I don't like embarrass myself like I see other like spiritual podcasts do sometimes where they do speak from so much authority on facts of this like moving thing that doesn't really have facts to it which is just like consciousness and knowledge expanding and i i know i love the idea i get a lot frequently i get annoyed with certain podcasts that i listen to that are so rigid on like it's this way and it, and it it's back into this kind of hidden duality even in spirituality it's like those are the bad guys. These are, we're the good guys. Are we winning or are we losing? And all of that is kind of, you know, not the point. And so I tend to exist in my mind in the mental space more than in a vulnerable heart space. And I've always loved, like with Soberish, it was very clear that you were speaking from experience primarily amongst like the time when I was following podcasts that everybody was kind of speaking factual and very mind and mental and, and that's all helpful. Um, but we are getting to a point where it's like the, it, I, you can hear everybody's like obsession with being this authority figure in the spiritual movement or um, conspiracy theories and stuff. And like, I know more than you. And so there's this like condescending feeling a lot of the times, which I find to be like really grating now. But when somebody's speaking vulnerably from their experience with a certain matter that happens to follow back to a conspiracy or like seeing ghosts or whatever, it's like, it's easier to trust that as a truth, their truth and their perspective. And I might have a different perspective, but it's like much more palatable to like, hear that and go oh how can i apply this to my my perspective where when somebody's like you know so like you still think the earth's round dude what's wrong with you like <laughs> it's obviously flat look water here sits flat you know and like i mean I'm, i've been down all of the like I, I i jump back and forth from like yeah this shit's flat and then i'm like oh, I, no i don't think it is anymore but so I think it's valuable sometimes, but I just, the, the, yeah, the, the true like experiential speaking and speaking from the heart is so much more like of the time now. So I, I, I love that it is kind of like poking that thing that I myself do and I don't like it. Yeah. Cause I got, I have so many, when I first woke up, you know, I'm on a meth bender and I'm talking to aliens and the aliens said the earth is not what you think it is to like everything is something different. Learn to look at things from different perspectives. And so I went through a phase where I would go outside and I stared at the sky constantly. And I went through a phase where I was imagining the sky as a blanket of some sort and the stars were holes poked in it and I would stare at the sky for hours from that perspective and then I went through a phase where I would look up at the sky and imagine the sky the stars were tiny lights hanging on strings and I would sit out there and stare at the sky like that and I swear to god the stars would come down to right above my face because I was looking at them from a different perspective without without my preconceived notion of what this is so when the first time I heard whatever flat earth stuff, I'm very open to different ways of looking at reality because I feel like those are mythologies. There's ways that we are explaining, giving, giving language to what we 
are experiencing, what consciousness is. And I don't really see a harm in playing with reality if you're not turning it into another rigid ideology. But what the the reality that we're coming out of is so hyper identified with masculine energy and masculine energy. I'm not defining as a gender thing. I'm defining it as mental, physical, quantifiable, the things that you can see in the physical reality versus the the things underneath, you know, the wiring under the board, as Terrence McKenna said in a in a trance song I heard in 99. Um, so these like playing with it, that's the thing I think that I'm finding so funny about breaking into a reality where we can finally play. We're finally able to play with different perspectives, but we're coming out of a reality where everything was put it in a box and label it, put it in a box, label it, put it in a box, label it. Everything had to fit in a right or wrong box. It had to go in one or the other. Everything had to fit in a good or bad box. No room for paradox. No room for paradox or two things being right at the same time, like perspective-based, subjective. We didn't have space for any of that. So as we start to venture into this vast expanse of what I believe is everything is true. Everything is true. It's just the perspective from which you are looking at it. And I can't always hold that. I can't hold that when somebody pisses me off or things aren't going my way or the IRS sends me a fucking bill. You know, I can't always hold that curiosity and that playfulness, but that's my goal. That's my ideal. But when it comes to this sort of shit, I just, I'm like, what is your perspective? Let's play with it. And I don't listen to podcasts, but definitely all the podcasts that you listen to that I overhear were an inspiration for this because it's so funny to me how, can you just check the video real quick? Cause I'm having this like ang stupid ass anxiety that I have about, um, your sacred number 22 minutes <laughs> perfect um the the way that people will just be saying the most crazy shit from an outside perspective from the old paradigm you know they're talking about how it's definitely a simulation but they have no space for the people who think something else that is on the same playing field yeah. you know is so funny to me and i talked to you about an idea for a podcast i have a lot of ideas for podcasts that i'll never do but where you just get two but you get the simulation guy and what's the other thing you're into right now you're into uh the toroidal toroid i just like to add syllables to words toroidal yeah that's still not really it's uh, it's <laughs> <laughs> um it is a uh it's the fucking taurus field i know what i, I know what it is it's the energy field but you were like into one okay, a month ago. bro, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, you were into one thing and now you're into the other thing. But if you hear the, the Taurus field guy, like almost like smugly mocking the simulation idea and then vice versa. Yeah. In a lot of ways. And my idea for a podcast is 20 minutes. The this guy gets to talk. And then 20 minutes, this guy gets to explain his perspective. And then for the last 20 minutes, it's like, now make this fit in the same worldview. Yeah. Find a way to make this fit. And I think that that's where we start cracking open wormholes and really connecting the dots. I think that each of us has a tiny piece of the puzzle. And as long as we think that our tiny piece of the puzzle is the entire puzzle, we're never going to get anywhere. So I thank you for hanging up a... a you're the best. A disco a ball disco here. Ball. Let me so get it down. For, uh, now you have a video. You can I do. do. I was going to try to get up, but I would have just knocked down all the microphones. You've probably heard me say this somewhere, but this is my favorite allegory for unity consciousness. I feel like where we were, this is very dusty. Um, unity consciousness is a filthy. <laughs> this is a filthy consciousness. Um we're coming out of a homogenized consciousness in which to me it feels like clumpy just like clumps uh of everyone believing the same thing and mostly having the thing that they believe handed down to them 
and there's so many ways it's handed down. Like right now it's like handed down from science, which is weirdly, it's like a movable thing, but for some reason we're pretending it's not. Um, it used to be handed down by religion and groups of people get together and they decide we collectively believe this thing with very, with very few variations. And then that's, that's how we feel safe. That's how we feel community. And it's all splitting off now and moving towards unity consciousness. And the thing that is funny to me in the, I don't know, what spiritual consciousness conversation is that people are still debating as if unity consciousness is somehow going to bring us to some, we all believe the same thing and we all see it the same way. And so you got the high vibe people that I'm going to shit on at some point in this podcast that think that everybody needs to get a high vibe in order for whatever. And my understanding of unity consciousness is that it's this. So we are one big imagination. Like when you go all the way back to the top, we are one big imagination pointing out and looking at itself, right? Which we all say we know, but it's that's something that's really hard to actually apply to your daily life. And each one of these squares is one of us. So this square right here is pointed at like that point. It's looking at this part of the studio and it believes that to be reality. This part here, or you said before, like it's pointing at a chalkboard. So they're looking at two different parts of reality and we spend so much time and energy debating that rather than acknowledging that you mark have had a completely different life than i've had you have had different experiences you're in a different type of avatar your perspective is going to be different than mine even though you and i resonate on a lot of stuff your perspective is going to be different than mine and you cannot make me hold your perspective and I cannot make you hold my perspective. But if we come together and curiously exchange them, we find more information and we have found this, right? And let's say we're probably like here and here on the on the disco ball. We're probably relatively close. And so that's someone that I would I would call you resonant, right? So we're we're kind of in the same thing. <clears throat> you know about music. I do not know about music. What I what I think I'm I'm saying here is harmony, right? Like we don't all play the same note, but we find a way to exist in harmony. And so maybe we're not ready to go, hey, I want to hear from the person who's looking at the floor because right now they feel like my enemy because I still believe that we're all separate. And I think you only heal your way to unity consciousness and I'm not claiming to be there. But at some point when we are able to stand in our own frequency, figure out what our own frequency is, I think we're still doing a lot of like shaking off the frequency that was handed to us or assigned to us. When we learned how to just be, to just broadcast our frequency without expectation or, or people pleasing or you know, trying to, to get status or clout or whatever. And we're just all comfortable in that, which I'm not. And then we are also able to hold paradox and go, I don't agree with that person at all, but that, that is the, that is that person. That is the character that person is playing where if this is a video game and there's an asshole in the video game, you don't try to change the character in the video game. You accept them as this is the character that walks by and vomits on my feet in Grand Theft Auto. Is there a vomiting no. guy? Okay, cool. I have never played a video game. For someone who talks about video games, I uh, should play one at some point. So this is, you can take this dusty ass mirror ball back. I'm going to leave it right here. Okay. <laughs> this is okay. Give it the mic. <laughs> what, what do you have to say? Have Unity to say? consciousness? Um, our sweet baby. Yeah, so I don't know. It's what I'm like, I want to have a podcast where I'm like open to ideas and then I just talk your face off about my ideas first. So that's what it's going to be. I mean, that's this is a Jessa Reed uh, production, so it is always just me talking at somebody. I like the idea of it being more, like you were saying in the beginning, it's, um, it's much more fun to not have, like we've been talking about this a lot lately. We heard it from somebody else, but it's such a great idea is like to not have beliefs but have ideas and so it's much easier to play with ideas because you can kind of like have an idea for a little bit and then drop it and like then have a different idea and you can put those ideas together sometimes uh 
beliefs are so like you have to stick to it and you that means you don't believe in something else right so with ideas it's much more playful and i do think there's something that has to um you have to get like heal some trauma and heal some things that cause us to try to like find the right answer and not the wrong answer and, and be good and not bad um to get to a point where you realize it's like oh there is this like middle place where it's like half truths and it's much more fun to play that way and and then you're a little bit more open to like your perspective like for me i have a hard time with and this is just my personal like experience and trauma in life that like talking to a hardcore old school rigid christian about like what we're all doing here and and just when they say reference god all the time i always want to be like stop and go can we have like five hour conversation about what god is to you because th yeah. then i'll get there but um if I'm like kind of stuck in that trauma and I haven't really healed and just been like, well, th there's some value to Christian beliefs there because there are some I find. And to get into a place where I'm just like playful and I'm not like threatened by the the Christian belief um, and just assume that there's something I can pick up in here that's of value to me. It's just more fun. Like it, it does take the the pressure off of having a disagreement with someone and focusing on that and then defending and and then feeling like bitter and going well like I guess we'll just agree to disagree man and and, and I, I hate that like feeling at the end because it's like well I just feel like we didn't get anywhere and yeah to try to hold that perspective of playing with the ideas to try to find the ultimate truth which is like where is this disco ball sitting we're all in it and there's like a big brain in the middle that we're all plugged into and that the game really is it's like now figure out where the disco ball is and so like all these perspectives really do have so much value if you're trying to all figure it out if i'm just over here and looking this way this is like all i can see but the game is to figure out what is the whole room and like what if the side of the room is just completely different and that gives us more information about what the entire room is, then like that, I need to listen to the Christian that's over here that's stuck on that programming, whatever I may think that that's good or bad. There's still something of value there. And I, yeah, I just find that to be much more um, exciting to have like half truths and never have to kind of have the pressure of finding the right answer. It's kind of just always expanding and being very open to new ideas and not like, getting so hung up on like trying to force my perspective down everybody's idea because well, who's the guy because i i've been i had never articulated it this way but i had been talking a lot about i'm gonna i want to philo i want to talk about philosophy i don't want to talk about facts that's just who i am as a person i don't know a lot of facts i'm not i didn't pass any grades in school after fifth i don't think i dropped out of ninth I got my GED by fill, making a dinosaur in the little whole things you got to fill out. I'm not someone who has a lot of knowledge. I have no credentials. All of my stuff comes from my own personal experience and patterns that I pick up and literally ideas. But I got that ideas, not beliefs. What was that guy's name? Uh, Brandon. Something. Brandon. I don't remember his last name, but the podcast is uh, Expanding Reality. Okay. It's on Rockfin. Okay, I overheard that and was like, that's the thing yeah. I'm trying to say. Yeah, and I, I keep thinking about it all the time, too, because it's so, it's so, like, subtle. So many people that are spiritual and, like, have podcasts and are, they kind of almost don't realize that you're, you're, like, trying to get people to get to, like, a rigid place of belief, which is, like, a final level. It's like, we're all going to get to that final level where we can actually see what, what it is. Yeah. But I don't totally think that exists because that does insinuate that there is an end and i really like believing that there's no end to the soul consciousness that unity thing um so I, yeah i think that's what we're starting to land in and this is something cringy for me about the soberish days or the when i very first started talking about this is i was still externalizing a lot <laughs> this is just a phase of it i guess where i'm externalizing the awakening, 
the uh, the apocalypse, the new world. We're all talking about the new world and very much externalizing it and projecting it onto reality at large. And over the last couple of years, what I've learned is I have no agency over what the world at large does. I have very little. I have impact over myself and how I look at the world. And the new world is an internal thing. And, you know, when you heal and you see a lot of your own bullshit and you work through a lot of stuff and you cringe, like you cringe, 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 you show up better in the world. And when that's happening on a large scale to a lot of people, the world will shift. But I feel like the last couple of years have really, I feel like we have a lot of conversations and, I, and I'm still doing this about like what we need to do as if like I'm on the board of directors of earth or something <laughs> where it's like, I don't know. This is just us. Like this is just each individual person working through their own shit. But part of that, I did you, did you catch that there for a minute? I completely lost what I was talking about. Part of that is this addiction to when will we get there? When will suffering be over? When will we have arrived? When will 5D Earth be here? You know, and it's I do believe there will be that we are like halfway through a pretty significant shift, a pretty significant like 10 year shift in consciousness. But the arrival, I think, is really distorted. Like our perception of what the arrival is, is really kind of distorted. And that makes me want to have more fun with the journey. That makes me want to stop trying to have the answers or to figure it out and more or less see what this is, which is just an awareness. This is just a point of awareness. This is a point of awareness. And when we reach the new world, we're we're going to enjoy it for five minutes and then we're going to go straight into, um, you know, destroying. <laughs> this is like what we do. So I don't know that that was any of that was worth fucking exploring. But I do think just to add one thing, I think that the idea of trying to get to a the end point or what it, how did you just say it? Um like the destination. Yeah. Is a valid feeling. Um, when it, I think for me, like when I think that way, the feeling is like I'm trying to escape the pain or have the pain stop and have other people's pain stop. So I don't have mm. to see it anymore. And so it's kind of from a place of when I, I equate that to kind of being not fully healed in the trauma because you're wanting to not feel alone or like make the the trauma make sense and have like the savior come or have us all get to utopia but then i find myself when i do get to a really like um heightened place of like bliss and kind of like calmness with that trauma and i kind of heal it that then you do realize that there's like I, there's something that you would get bored with when you get to the end mm. and that the cooler idea to kind of like then expand to is go, Oh, there's no real end. There is relief and there is like a commonality we can all get to and stop being like pummeled by parasites and parasitic like feelings and desires. And so like that is part of the trauma. I think that's still like speaking to you and going like you, you we need we'll get there we're gonna get there like keep speaking your truth because we need to all get there and i need to save everybody because we need to get there but like really like being okay within your own being and healing yourself and going inward you kind of will realize it's like it's gonna get if, if there's an end then that that's like it's boring like it, it if the idea that it just is ever expanding and we get to a place where we do free ourselves from this whatever the fucking bad part that is in this world that we're in right now, like we can agree there's some kind of parasitic kind of thing to clear that out. And then we will have like a time of um, more easygoing reality, but then there is going to be the next thing that comes and there's going to be some kind of distortion that we then have to rise again. And like the whole, so the whole, you know, with that saying is like, 
the real adventure is the journey through it. And it is kind of like being just aware as you go through that is, is like the magical spot. But when you're traumatically like still hurt and, and need to heal, it, it will very many, like a lot of the times it just feels like I, can we get the savior or can we just all be done? Or we're just like we, so much of spirituality. And I don't know if I want to unpack this whole thing right now, but so much of spirituality is, is seeking escape from feelings. Yeah. So much. And you know, you, you're someone who loves to listen to a lot of information. You love that. Feeling, I'm a spiritual bro. You're a spiritual bro. The feeling of this really big, I did this as well. Like in the first five years of waking up, you have so many paradigm shifts where you get a new piece of information and you're really like, you're solving the puzzle. You think you're solving the puzzle and you're like, oh my God, this is it. Holy shit. And then your mind gets blown and then it it gets addictive. It's a dopamine, right? It's a dopamine rush. But also it gives you an escape from regular life. And conspiracy theories can do this, not to say that conspiracy theories are, are wrong, but any of this spirituality, high vibe shit, uh, consciousness, downloading this information 24 seven can serve as an escape from your real life and from your feelings. And part of, I feel like part of us knows, I think the high vibe shit is really kind of like trying to escape feelings and the new world stuff is, can be a, I'm looking for the end of suffering, which I believe the end of suffering is like an internal, I do believe there is a potential end of suffering, but I believe that comes from the full acceptance of everything that this reality has. And I don't think that that's what we're talking about when we talk about the end of suffering. When we talk about utopia, we are not talking about living in a state of awareness to where when, when life hands us lemons, we are able to take, like, hold that the lemons are both good and bad at the same time. We're talking about, oh, I'm going to go live in a reality where nothing bad ever happens to me. So for a lot of people chasing that idea, that 5D, high vibe only shit, is really I don't ever want to have a negative feeling, which is and I'm utterly guilty of this. Like I couldn't I couldn't deal with my own feelings. I was very overwhelmed by feelings. Other people's feelings are still pretty overwhelming for me. I'm still working through it. It's been like three years. Um and so much of my spirituality or my consciousness was mental compartmentalization, which I'm very good at. I'm very good at. When I take a hit when I deal with tragedy, I'm very fast, too fast, have that shit put into some pretty neat and tidy boxes. And then I want to be done. I want to rush to everything happens for a reason. This is in the greater good. This will all come out in the wash, whatever. And you and I have experience with this, you know, spiritual bypassing, which I think is whatever. It doesn't work. So I don't even think it's worth pointing out because it the feelings need to be felt. The trauma needs to be processed. But likewise, I think that the initial awakening process is mind blowing, but that's not sustainable. There comes a point where you're just like, okay, <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. all this crazy shit exists. And also the IRS sent me a letter. Like also I have to, I obviously got a letter from the IRS today because I'm, I'm, I'm coming back to that a lot, but there is, yeah, there is kind of a funny escapism i'm very guilty of talking about earth like it's a, a nightmare prison hellscape and that's something that's really shifted for me in the last year i have a gratitude for being here in the visceral dualistic reality i feel like i've tasted some more like non-linear reality recently and i go oh I get it. Slowing down and experiencing each moment individually has its benefits. I can see why we do this. I've also just noticed my tendency toward, you know, money used to be a huge stress for me. And then when money stopped being a, a huge stress for me, relationships became a huge stress for me. And then when I got a good relationship, then it's like, I do always just find something to be, to be chewing on, you know, to be, for it to be chewing on me. And I think that that's human nature. 
And that's why I think we wouldn't stay in any sort of utopia. Also, utopia is fucking subjective. So anyway, there's God. It's it's really it's what, really impossible not to do this. What do you think is most valuable about being choosing to try to like to attempt to be vulnerable and emotional, and or like not emotional to, to be vulnerable and let emotions ride. Uh, yeah. So my definition of vulnerability has shifted also in the last year where I think that people thought I was vulnerable before because I overshared, but oversharing was always actually a way that I maintained agency over a lot of my own stuff. I think it was like, Part of it was I couldn't help it. You know, I'm not, I don't know how to have surface level conversation, not because I'm so deep, but just because I'm so awkward. So part of it's just kind of was like a nervous habit. But then I, I see so much into people and I, so it feels like they can all see so much into me. So it's like, I want to own that. Like when my teeth fell out, I had all the best joke. Like I had... I'm like, I know it's the elephant in the room, so I'm going to fucking address it. That's how I feel about my, you know, that's so I overshare because I'm like, you can all see this, right? And they're like, no, actually we didn't, but now we do. Um, vulnerability for me now, and I'm sure this is an experience a lot of people are having. I spent 2018, 2017 through 2019, I think realizing that the vast majority of my personality was defense mechanisms that I had created to stay safe in a world that was not meant for someone who's sensitive. And as I started to release those, I was then this like exposed, very sensitive person, just as the like height of people just going nuts on each other on the internet around 2020. And then I was terrified. I spent the last couple of years terrified. I have anxiety disorder now I did not have before. Uh, because I didn't feel, I didn't have that tough exterior that was not real but I hid behind it for so long and I never cried in front of people before 2019. And I, it was like so shameful and embarrassing to me. And I really literally had no idea what I was feeling. I would experience horrible trauma and just be fine because mentally I'm like, I'm fine. Cause I'm just identified with my mind. And I didn't know myself to be someone who's sensitive. And that's like, you know, whatever in childhood wasn't safe to be sensitive. So what I, what I, aim for now is boundaried vulnerability. So vulnerability for me is I'm letting you see who I actually am and who I actually am is someone who is sensitive, not in the fucking victim. Sh I'm like not the overly oozing victim, whatever, just I feel that, you know, I feel when people don't like me and it does bother me and I am I do have needs in a relationship. I used to be someone who pretends to be cool and low maintenance. And it's like, well, I'm, I'm not. I'm accepting these parts of myself. I'm a control freak when I don't feel safe. I'm accepting and acknowledging and owning these parts of myself that I have hidden from the world and from myself. Being sensitive and having emotional needs, like these are, these were so, if you told me five years ago that this is shit I would be doing on the internet, I would be like, God, you know, I felt like I had to be funny all the time. I had to be you know, tough. And t I used to read every comment and like force myself to read comments where people were saying horrible things about me because if I couldn't fucking handle it, then I wasn't strong. It's was, like way over identified with this idea of strength being not having feelings. So for me, that's my truth. That's who I am. And the boundaries piece is something I am slowly integrating, which is I am working to be a person who doesn't cross into someone else's aura. I'm working to be a person who who respects other people's boundaries and their perspectives. And that's a work in progress. And I am requiring that for access to me in return. I used to be someone who like wouldn't on the internet, let's say, block people because that would make me look weak or whatever. And I, this doesn't happen a lot to me. But like I've come to a place where I just know you're not getting a ton of my bandwidth. If you don't like what I'm talking about, fucking don't listen to it, you weirdo. But I'm going to be my perspective. I'm going to respect your perspective. But I am I am not going to try to change you. But if you try to change me, I'm going to say like, no, you know.
this is so stupid and easy, but so much of who I was was like treating life and every social interaction like I was going to war, you know, and that's something I found in myself. That's a whole nother rabbit hole in the last year as I've crippling social anxiety and locking myself in a house for two years has weirdly not helped it. It's somehow worse than before. But I caught myself getting ready to walk into a, I don't know, like a grocery store a few months ago. And I caught myself go. And the thing that flashed through my mind was walking into walking past the bullies at school. And I realized that every time I go in public or do anything that is it involves other people that I don't know and don't feel safe with, I brace as if I'm about to be, bu I got bullied. It's probably not a surprise. I got bullied a lot in school. So it was like if I, yeah, I was walking past the the people who thought I was a fucking idiot. And that's how I, how I, how I've survived is to put on this like bravado and this tough, I don't give a fuck exterior. When I give so many, I give so many fucks. The, the, the depth to which I give a fuck and I'm letting people know that now I'm letting that be seen and I'm learning boundaries and I am, I am presenting is what I actually am, which is someone who doesn't stick to things. I don't stick to things. I don't operate linear. I have a lot of ideas. I don't carry most of them across the finish line. I abandon projects like I mean yeah you can find all over the internet you know I'm not someone who is has the answers for sure I'm not someone who's going to get it right I'm probably not a good person and I'm accepting that stuff about myself by not trying to hide it from other people I don't know was that the longest fucking answer yes okay good all right <laughs> that was good that was a deep question. What the fuck, Mark? <laughs> um, I guess that that can be it because I'm. I feel like there's a lot of things that I want to explore more. I want to talk to you about your awakening process and the just the cringy thing that we do in the awakening process where we try to wake everybody else up. But I kind of want that to be its own episode. So, yeah. uh. I'm probably going to put a few episodes out this week. This is going to come out on 11, 11, and then I'll put a few episodes out over the weekend. And then this is just going to be me and like five different friends. Uh, just, yeah, it's not an interview show. It's just a conversation show with friends. And I, who knows really, who knows? I might abandon this in a fucking month. This might last for years. I am playing with the idea of each season is a new premise. So then maybe I might not get as bored. But I think I think that's it and we'll just see what it is. Cool. Where can people find I'll just tell people where to find you. No, you can find me at uh well I, I do music. You can find the music on Spotify. All the music from AOD is this yeah. this young man. And uh, it's Sutnop. It's my last name backwards, S U I T N O P. And then I'm on Instagram at Sutnop, but the S is a five because somebody has Sutnop. So he has Sutnop with one follower. Which I assume that guy's last name is Pontius as well. I think it is, right? I, think I would hope so. But I have to talk, talk that to guy. Him. He seems like a nice guy. Um, Jessery. Oh, sorry, I'm projecting. I'm immediately like going to war with people outside of myself <laughs> jessery.com there's just stuff i don't know i'm sometimes i do sessions who knows there's patreon i was just made aware today that some people don't know even know what patreon is so patreon's where you can pay for this sort of stuff can you imagine wanting to do that um jessery comedy on instagram jessery on tiktok i don't know i'm trying to like that app and i don't so we'll see uh jessery comedy on twitter but i deleted it because i couldn't fucking handle the really good at promoting yourself screaming opinions not my not my thing i don't love <laughs> yeah, it's it. not my thing either I'm just... 
I don't like the way I don't I don't want to convince anyone to do anything like to like anything I do. I yeah. want to put it down on the table if you want to pick it up. Cool. But I also have imposter syndrome, so who knows? All right, well, see you in a couple days. Wait, aren't you doing stand up comedy? I am doing stand up comedy. It's a fucking Again? thank God for you. You're so good at this. Um, I've not been on stage in almost three years. So in true Jessa form, I started booking headliners, <laughs> headlining shows without even trying again. So who knows? Uh, come watch your bomb. Come watch me bomb. I Salt Lake City, January 6th, I think, somewhere in there. And um, Phoenix, that same weekend, are already booked. I'll get a stuff, jessery.com, just keep keep in touch with that. I'll, I'll get those up soon. Um, those are with Aaron Woodall from Mormon and the Meth Head. And then in February, Dan Donahue and Karen Rontowski and I are going to do some stuff in the Pacific Northwest, including Karen's psychic stand-up, which is so fucking good. I can't wait to be a part of one of those. So... Yeah, we'll see. I'll have more. This feels so weird. There'll be stuff and things and stand up soon. You know, I don't know. It's my plan. There'll be another horse of the apocalypse, probably. Okay, bye. See you, spiritual bros.